and welcome back. We're in Acts 2 today, or this morning. Um, so glad you're here with me, reading some more of the good word. And I just want to pray. Um, the title of chapter 2 is Coming of the Holy Spirit. So I want to uh, pray for us and um, just that God opens up our eyes and our ears to see and to hear, um, that we use discernment, that we listen for his voice, spending time with him alone. Uh, spending time in meditation with him, meditating over the word and what it means so that you can really receive it on your on your heart or that, where you're mindful of it. So um, yeah, that's what I'm going to pray about. And um, I hope you're doing good. So please join me. Heavenly Father, we are not worthy of all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, but we are thankful. We are thankful for your sacrifice we are thankful for your presence in our lives we are thankful that you are god above all else and i just pray today as we read father god that you open our eyes to see and our ears to hear may we always be close to you not never veering too too long or too far away from your presence by skipping days and not praying by not worshiping by not giving thanks lord i pray that we are in close relationship to you and that as the days get tougher with time, that we have the will to withstand the enemy. I thank you and I praise you and I ask that you give us a message today. May we understand it and receive it and one day share it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, coming of the Holy Spirit, chapter two. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place and this is they being the disciples who after receiving a word from Jesus um, were also called apostles, the select 12. Um, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Okay, so again, they're in one place together during the Pentecost. And uh, there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Different dialects being from different areas. Um, and during the time of Pentecost, they came from all over, as we're gonna read here in just a second, verse five. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, and when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cap Cappadocia, Pont Pontus and Asia. So... The spirit comes over them and then they, they uh, are speaking in, in their original dialects or um, languages that they haven't been using. And so that's, that's what they're questioning. How is this possible? Uh, verse 10, Phrygia and Pamphila, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't look up how to pronounce these. Egypt and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in their own tongues, the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Others mocking said that they are full of new wine. So not all of them, not every person was full of the spirit. There were some that didn't believe and didn't receive the Holy Spirit. And so their witness to this, um, the people speaking in different tongues, and there must have been some confusion too, I would assume. Um, because they were speaking so differently. Verse 14, but Peter standing up with the 11 raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words, for these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God. This is the Old Testament, what Joel said. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my maidservants, I'm sorry, my men servants, and on my maidservants. 
and it's coming to fruition, like it's coming to pass. More of the Old Testament from Joel. I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be, fit, shall be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands, have crucified and put to death, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. For David says concerning him, he's telling them that they know that they crucified the Christ, that they know that what Jesus said is true. They were witnesses to that. And um, now what David, um, for David says concerning him, let's read on. This is the more of the Old Testament. I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. Therefore my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh, sometimes I go right back to where I left off. Um, for he, Therefore my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence. Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would, rise, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. He, foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of the Christ, that his soul was not left in Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God had raised up, of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear, this which you just now are witnessing, and are possibly somebody speaking in your original dialect. You are a witness. You have a testimony to share. Um, and in a different uh I was listening to YouTube. Sometimes it's just better to listen to other people uh, read and then hear their their point of view from it. But um, David, um, some people thought it was him, but as we learn here, it is um, Jesus who was crucified and then rose from the dead. And there are people that saw it, and now the people that are gathered there in Jerusalem, they're um, speaking and they're original dialect and that is the spirit the holy spirit over them taking over um let me keep going and let me let me re, re uh, read that he poured out this which you now see and hear for david did not ascend into the heavens but he says himself the lord said to my lord sit at my right hand till i make your enemies your footstool so when jesus went into ascended into heaven he is at the right hand of the father therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. So he is Lord and he is Christ, a man who came to earth to, to die for our sins. Now when they heard this, they were, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of your baptized let Every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. A vital church grows. This is the beginning. This is like when the disciples and then the chosen 12 to be apostles. It's almost like the, after they got uh, a word from Jesus and um, he spoke to them and he they were uh, full of the Holy Spirit. He blessed them because they were the ones that were going to now spread the gospel and stand up a church. Um, I, 
I, I lost my train of thought, but basically they had their marching or orders to share the gospel. And it's almost like um, the Holy Spirit is in the place of Jesus. Jesus is still there in spirit though. And um, I, I know that that doesn't always make sense, but there it is, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay, <laughs> that's, uh, please leave me comments if that doesn't make any sense. A vital church grows. This is the beginning, okay? And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from the perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. So that's exactly what God wanted him to do, wanted them to do, to, to raise up a people that they were witnesses to, sharing the gospel of what they've seen, and possibly these people, some of them in this group of thousands, were also witnesses, and so they couldn't deny it. And so it is in passing down those stories, it is in sharing the word, that we receive the word, that we um, grow, that we um, continue our heritage. In this case, we continue sharing the gospel, and we keep... Um, sharing the importance of repentance, the importance of baptism, not just the water, but to receive it in your spirit. And um, that's what they're doing. So let me keep going. 43. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Not all who believed were together and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. And this is in the beginning. Jesus said that they will continue a word, that there will be continue to be more people joining the kingdom family, the kingdom of believers, of Christians. And um, they're in communion with each other. Like it, they're all learning the same thing at the, at the same time. And um, I think that that's great. Those, those were their marching orders and they took them and they um, helped others be baptized and receive it. And so that just, that just reinforces for me the importance of really reading, worshiping, meditating on the word and talking about it with other people that believe the same thing you do. They might not always be the same religion. They might not always you know, believe everything that you believe, but it is important for us to worship, to commune with, like to congregate with, share a word with people that are like-minded, that are equally yoked, that believe in Christ. Like, I I can't expect an atheist to want to hang out with me and share in this word. Like, what could we what could we possibly talk about if the atheist doesn't want to read the the word or see it as true? So. In sharing the gospel, the believers are the ones that receive it as true. And there are many people that didn't receive, they witnessed and they didn't receive. But there are many that um, were stood up because of the apostles sharing the gospel and teaching them all together, all these people. And it was 3,000 souls were added to them. And um, in these days, I hope that more and more people are sharing the gospel because it's never too late. It's not too late until you take your last breath. And so let me get off that tangent, but I do care really. I'm so thankful for you joining. Um, I love you as a sister in Christ, as a friend that is um, diving into the word with me. We got that in common. We're believers that's in common and we just want to do the right thing by God. We have that in common, I'm assuming. <laughs> so um, Heavenly Father, just bless the viewer right now, wherever they are. May they receive this as true. May they stand up as um, believers to share their own testimony as we all have one of what you have done in our lives and the many blessings, the things that you have pulled us out of, the things that you have blessed us with, Father God. We thank you and we praise your holy name. Amen. As always, I hope you take care of yourself. God bless you. Bye.